So I'm diversified, not just in the stock market of bulk. As a matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm, I got a baby toe in the stock market, but I also, you know, I got bonds. So when the interest rate goes up, I'm really happy. Um, I even have, you know, money in some CDs. I got some liquid stuff sitting in the money market because, you know, I don't trust people. Cash is king to me. Y'all can, y'all on some bull crap if you don't have a lot of cash somewhere. But the interest rate was basically zero. So I had money sitting in an account getting like $7 or not even, I think I got like $3 on a whole lot of money. I was mad about it. And so the interest rate going up is great. I stopped doing CDs because I'm like, what's the point if I can't get more than 1%, 1 which is what I was getting one, you know, it was good at one point. So this is good, but I got to wait until 2023. Yeah, so I mean, from a broader sense, it, stocks are a little bit shaky from rising interest rates, just because it means that it's going to be harder and more or more expensive for businesses to borrow money. Um, so it just makes it a little bit tougher to run a business. So that's why stocks get a little bit shaky. But people have to remember too that they're raising interest rates from the policy that was in place during the COVID crash, which we're we're way beyond that point at this point. I mean, the, there's still some hardships going on in the U.S. economy for sure. But it's not like the U.S. economy is at a complete standstill like it was in March 2020. And it's the same policy that was in place since then. So it makes sense that they're at least starting to, you know, um, to plan to raise interest rates here in the next few years. Robert, um, you know, with the rising interest rates, the fears of inflation, which, I, you know, people think inflation is going to happen like on a Tuesday and then that's it. It's like a slow and steady thing, inflation, right? Um if you had a thousand dollars today, which I know you do, a thousand dollars, where do you invest a thousand dollars today? Depends on what is already in your portfolio. If I don't have any exposure to the stock market yet, I'm just buying an index fund like the S and P 500 index fund, like SPY or VOO, or a tech focused fund like QQQ, because you really want to have some broad exposure to the market really before you start buying individual stocks. But some individual stocks I like right now would, would be something like Google even, which, you know, there are a lot of inflation fears right now, but companies like Google really aren't affected by inflation because the commodity that they sell, which inflation is just the general rising of prices, mainly commodities, Google doesn't really sell lumber or steel or anything like that. Their commodity that they sell are lines of code, which isn't really affected by inflation. So whether we have inflation or not, I, I like Google right now and the stock's pretty cheap too. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because there's Kathy Wood is this oracle out there. She runs a very successful uh, firm, uh, a fund rather, or money funds. Uh, you know, her idea is that with technology, the cost of things will actually go down, which is a counterforce to inflation, if that makes sense. Is that something you see happening as well? Yeah, and we really, that's, that, that's the other end of the spectrum is deflation, which we've been seeing for years in the tech sector. You know, if, if you think about even just like TVs, for example, I remember when I was in college, like a flat screen TV, you know, it was like 850 bucks for a 32 inch. Those are about $250 now. Yeah. So we're seeing, we've seen a lot of deflationary forces in the technology space. Not the same everywhere else. We have been seeing inflation for years in things like the housing market, for example, where, where housing prices have just gone crazy, especially in the last year. Um, so it really depends on the market but when it comes to inflation. And really, according to the Fed, which I kind of believe this as well, is a lot of this inflation we're seeing is, is transitory. It, it's become, it's as a result of supply constraints that happened as a result of the COVID lockdowns and the you know, global economy kind of get, getting back on its feet. So you know, it's a little bit of both. 866-801-8255, if you have any questions, uh, stock questions. Um, I, I'm i watching a lot of people. We were talking about GameStop, I think last time you were here and AMC and all, you know, which two companies that are basically bankrupt that are trading still GameStop still trading in like in a $300 range for what? Because people on Reddit and so, you know, social media decide to get together and run pump and dump basically, you know, run that stock up and then dump, you know, it's, it's crazy. You being in this market, you're still young. And it was funny, the caller saying that they were an older millennial. I was thinking about you, Sina. Um, I think- uh, uh, Geriatric Ross's, millennials. Ger yeah, yes, that, that's a whole other category. But for you, watching the stock market with all these regular ass people in it, 
who haven't done the work, haven't watched, don't, they probably don't read any balance sheets. They probably don't read any 52 week, you know, they, they're, they're not in it like that. They don't know about dividends. They're just playing video games basically with the stock market. How does that impact the rest of us who might actually do the homework and do the, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to lie. It is a little discouraging to see, you know, 15 year olds in their basement outperforming me by buying stocks like GameStop and AMC. But we've seen speculative bubbles like this many times over the history of financial markets. And really, it never ends well. I, I think there will be a reckoning with these meme stocks eventually. Not that, you know, I, I think people should be able to buy or sell if they want to. I don't think there should be restrictions on what they can buy or sell. People should be able to do whatever they want with their money. But me personally, it's not my style of investing, and I don't think it's going to last forever. It's really lasted a lot longer than I thought. What if this is the new normal? <laughs> you know, because I, I, I hear people who can't read a book talk about investing in Forex. You know, it's, it, to me, it's, it's, a, it's an affront. It's like you got a Ph.D., and you didn't finish high school. Like I feel very, you know, but is this the, the future? Maybe this is just the future. We just got to suck it up. I think that there's a there's a danger in saying that. There, there's a classic saying in investing that when people start talking about how we're in a new paradigm is, is the term that people use, that usually is a sign that we're kind of near the peak of that euphoria. Um, and we kind of saw that happen in February with, with the GameStop stuff. After we had that incredible surge, that parabolic move in uh, GameStop stock, we actually had a huge collapse in, in uh, growth stocks and, and very speculative assets for about three months there. They're starting to recover a little bit now, but that was kind of the, the uh, euphoric peak of that market, at least in the short term. So for me, I, I think it's okay to speculate on stuff like GameStop and AMC, but the really important thing is that you want to keep those speculative bets small so that you don't really set yourself back long term. Um, so for me, I always tell my, my followers, you know, don't put more than like 5% of your portfolio in really speculative assets like GameStop or AMC. Put it in perspective, though, it is uh, trading almost double what Apple is right now, $223.59. I'm like, it's a bankrupt company. How How is it outperforming, uh, trading more than Apple? How? Make it well, make sense. It, it, it is incredible, though, because when you think about it, it's Wall Street bets, the Reddit group that has really been behind all of this. But there's, if you say that there's, there's about 10 million people on the Wall Street Bets forum, if they all invest, you know, $1,000 into GameStop, it really makes them as powerful as a lot of these really big hedge funds. So the price action does make sense to a certain extent. All that said, there's definitely a lot of institutional money at this point that's kind of encouraging this behavior in order to bring more people in the, into the market and pump that up even more for, for an eventual, eventual dump, in, in my estimation. And that's what I love about this, is that we the, the whole system has been exposed as being semi-fraudulent. At the end of the day, you've got big <laughs> swinging dicks that can come in with their institutional cash, move a stock if they want. Carl Icahn can, Carl Icahn can come in, buy a bunch of shares of something, be, get himself on a board seat. Why can't a bunch of Reddit people do it? It's because we don't like their shit posting. We don't like who they are. We don't like the funny memes they put on there. They say stupid things all the time. They don't go to the country clubs that we do. I get it. But at the same time, I think it's, I as a comedian, I find it very funny that, that these people that are painstakingly thinking that, that their elaborate algorithms or all these different intricate things that they learned to do at Wharton Business School are just thrown out the window by one forum on Reddit. Okay, he has nothing to say. He said what he had to say. All right. <laughs> no, I was, was going to say, it, it, it is really incredible that they're able to do this. And But what I was saying before, people should have the right to make these wagers if they want to, whether yeah. it's Carl Icahn or people on Reddit. That's my whole point. Um, I know there are a lot of people who are saying that they should restrict trading on GameStop and AMC to kind of put an end to this. But this has been going on on Wall Street for decades, and, and no one was trying to regulate them exactly. then. No, nobody right. on Wall Street was complaining in 2000 when all those growth stocks and SPACs were going 5x in a few months. They only started complaining when retail investors started to do it. The, regular this, ass people. That's what we call them. Regular ass people yeah. on this show. Robert Ross. 
And the SPACs, that's a really good point. The SPACs is just a shell company that goes public. And then they advertise to like, we got Shaquille O'Neal on the board. And all of a sudden money comes flooding in to that, to that stock. What is in that company? What does it have? Literally nothing but Shaquille O'Neal and a board seat and with, a, with an idea that they would buy something later. Oh, and if you think this is bad, then you should see what's going on with cryptocurrencies right now. Oh, I, mean, I was just going to ask you, yeah. else, since we last were here with you, Robert Ross, since you were last with us, uh, TikTok stock guy is who he is. Um, El Salvador has allowed, is making it the currency in El Salvador, Bitcoin. World Bank is slamming that, um, and they're not going to help El Salvador. But what? tell us what's going on with Ethereum, with... with uh, Dogecoin, which is another uh, GameStop type crypto. Well, that's what happened after the GameStop collapse and, and all the growth stocks and SPACs kind of went to back to their fair value, in my opinion. A lot of that money moved into cryptocurrencies, stuff like Dogecoin, which, which went up like 1,500%, 15,000% in a few months. Um, which, which it's, it's a similar situation though, with all these retail investors just piling into, I mean, if you don't think that GameStop has a viable business, Dogecoin is just a meme. It's a meme coin. Yeah. Yet it has, it's, I think it's the sixth largest cryptocurrency in the world now. Um, so tons of speculative excess going on in the cryptocurrency market as well. The news with Bitcoin and I mean, I don't, if you guys have been following it, there's been a huge correction in Bitcoin as well. It's down about 40% from its highs hit a few months ago. But there has been a lot of positive news. Like you're saying that like the El Salvadorian news it's huge. It's the first country that has now recognized Bitcoin as legal tender, which is, a, I mean, it's a very small country, but, you know, it could cause a domino effect in countries where there are issues with stable currencies, which not that Bitcoin is that stable. But if you compare it to something like the, you know, Venezuelan currency, which, you know, lost basically had hyperinflation and lost almost all of its value in a few years, you actually like to have an alternative like Bitcoin. <sighs> All right. Uh, I love the question Cena said, uh, asked about the thousand dollars. If you have a thousand dollars, um, your portfolio, you're, you're, you're a millennial. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that just based on looking at you. Yeah, I'm 33. Okay. So he's a lower millennial. No, I'm just playing. Cena, Cena, Cena. <laughs> I'm right in the meaty part of the curve. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's you're not right, a geriatric you're... millennial. I don't think. No, you're not. Right you're, 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 you're that sweet spot. Um, are you starting to become more conservative in your in your investing as you now you know push into 35 40 what what how are you changing your strategy uh it, conservative investing is really changing o over the last five years at least i mean what what is conservative investing now you only have 10 percent of your portfolio in bitcoin i mean for for me i've always been a pretty conservative investor overall i've always held dividend paying stocks um, right now, about 25% of my portfolio is dividend paying stocks. The other is growth stocks, which are companies like I was talking about earlier, like Google, Facebook, Amazon, in addition to smaller companies as well, like CrowdStrike, which is one of the largest cybersecurity companies uh, on the market. But I do hold a good bit of cryptocurrency as well, like, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, which I like to call the, the blue chip cryptocurrencies. Um, because I think those, especially Ethereum, um, most people don't, I, I did a video on this not long ago on TikTok that, that went viral, but Ethereum, you want to think about it as the operating system for cryptocurrency because the 60 of the top 100 cryptocurrencies are actually built on top of the Ethereum network. So buying Ethereum basically is like investing in the long-term viability of cryptocurrencies. Not to say that there's not going to be big corrections in, in Ethereum and other alternative altcoins, um, which is basically any crypto other than Bitcoin. Um, but if you're holding it for the long term, it's a pretty good bet, in my opinion. That's one of my largest individual positions. How do people uh, connect with you, follow you? I know you have a company. Is it Malden? Ek, ek, ek? What is it? So I, I actually have left Malden Economics since I was here last time to, to start my own company. Um, so I, I have all the social media stuff going and I have a Patreon as well, where I basically do the same projects that I did for Malden Economics. What's the name of the new company? Let me just cross that out. It, it's it's just gonna be, it's just tick stocks. So it's that right now it's all on Patreon. Uh, tick stocks on Patreon. Tick post, stocks. Yeah, you T can T I K stocks. Yep, you can go okay. on there. I, I post free articles on there every Thursday. There was one on there this morning, actually about the Fed meeting yesterday. Um, and if you subscribe, you can see my what's in my personal portfolio. 
Robert, last question. Tesla, is it a fraud? I don't think it's a fraud. I do think it's probably overvalued though. I actually sold some of my Tesla last month. Now I own only my profits are on the table with Tesla. I call it a free ride where yeah. you kind of take your principal off and putting it into some safer, safer assets, which has worked so far. I actually started selling that in January, right near the peak. Wish I would have taken the full free ride then, but you're never going to hit it out of the park every time in this game. Um, but yeah, not not a fraud. I know there's a lot of people who, who kind of think Elon is maybe a shady character. Um, but no, I, I think that they have exposure to huge sec secular growth trends like EV adoption and solar ad adoption. And they're the leader in that space. And while Elon can be a pretty erratic character, uh, I think that he has, you know, he's one of the smartest entrepreneurs who's ever lived. So I like to invest. In ever growth. lived? Come on, man. <laughs> Please don't put that on him. Please not ever lived. Come on. We, I mean, you're talking about Einstein, Da Vinci, uh, uh, Carter G. Woodson, W.B. Du Bois. You're, you're talking about Charles Drew. Ever lived? Ever lived? Louis Latimer? It, that, no, not ever lived. No. Uh, it's one of the smartest entrepreneurs. Tesla? Not, not, not investors. Actually, Nikolai <laughs> Tesla himself? Okay. <laughs> ever lived? No. We will not give. I think he's going to implode. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction. We can agree to disagree on that one. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll do that. At Tick Stocks is where you can follow him.